Hi-Fi Rush is superb. Announced at Microsoft's Developer Direct showcase last week and released immediately thereafter, the game is a wildly creative effort from developer Tango Gameworks. It's an action platformer rhythm game side-scroller all mashed into one, held together by an incredible sense of style and bold visual choices. This is a wild, courageous game that succeeds on just about every level, and it's an eye-popping visual treat as well. It's also the first major first-party Microsoft title in over a year, ending a prolonged drought for exclusive Xbox software. So today we'll be taking a look at Hi-Fi Rush's daring flair and beat-matching brawling action and try to get a sense of what makes this game tick. Hi-Fi Rush is a thrill ride from the get-go. At its core, the game is a snappy character action game built to enable high-speed combat. You can dodge, attack, parry, jump, grapple, and unleash a host of special abilities. And all are beautifully animated and super responsive. On a basic level, it's not so different from something like Devil May Cry. The key twist is that most in-game actions work better when timed to match the background beat. A constant pulse of rock and electronic music accompanies gameplay, and it dictates the flow of battle. It seems intimidating at first glance, but it's really not so complicated. Attacks get a bonus when you time them roughly in line with a simple 4-4 beat, for instance. Enemy moves correspond to certain musical moments, allowing you to anticipate when to parry. The game environment, UI, and even character idle animations all pulse along to that same beat, helping to keep you in the groove. Music matching subtly reshapes the way you engage with enemies, but it's not overwhelming, and once I got used to it, I rarely had to think about it at all. Everything feels really natural. It helps that Hi-Fi Rush takes its time to introduce gameplay concepts, drip feeding the players so they don't get overloaded. It starts slow, but by a couple hours in or so, the combat becomes a frenetic affair that looks and feels amazing. Hi-Fi Rush is a music-themed combat game, but it's hardly a one-note experience. At times, the title is a platformer, a side-scroller, or an on-rails action game. Certain gameplay cutaways require you to repeat simple rhythmic patterns as well, often to defeat powerful foes. Hi-Fi Rush is always fast, always fun, but never monotonous, and the game does a fantastic job keeping things varied. But wow. I am absolutely floored by the way this game looks. From the very first frame, it's clear that something special is going on. Essentially, Tango Gameworks have mimicked the look of flat 2D animation within 3D game content. Characters are strictly cell shaded have bold, uneven outlines, and feature dramatic, color-rich designs. There is a healthy amount of polygonal detail, but they have a certain exaggerated low-density style that is a good match for the look of TV cartoons. Animation is the other critical element here. Character movements usually update at 15 frames per second during cinematics, which gives motion a staccato, hand-drawn animation quality. For production reasons, key animations in 2D television are often animated on twos, or between 12 and 15 frames per second, so this proves to be a very good match. My best guess is that this is baked into the animation data itself, so characters should update at a similar animation rate, regardless of the output frame rate. During gameplay, the game thankfully proceeds with full rate animation, which is very important for playability. Beyond the basic technical details, there's a sort of animated expressiveness to the way that characters moved that I loved. Everything seems based around a set of dramatic key poses, just like traditional 2D, which keeps the game in line with animation conventions. The only real giveaway during cutscenes is that characters maintain perspective correct detail and proportions, which wouldn't be typical of hand animated 2D, though this does seem hard to avoid. And camera animation updates at full rate, which mostly looks good like during scene pans, but it can look a bit awkward during swooping, rotating camera movement. Tango has generally kept the camera movement to a minimum, but the few moments where they do indulge themselves with 3D style camera movement, the results look a little bit awkward. None of this would work especially well, of course, with the traditional materials pipeline and lighting model, so Hi-Fi Rush makes universal use of cell shading. Characters are usually lit with just two bands of lighting a base color and a shadow color, in addition, of course, to those black outlines. Environments show a bit more variability. You can spot some slightly more granular bands of shade around baked shadows, for instance, and there does seem to be a basic GI system in place, but the key here is that texture detail is kept to an absolute minimum. 
That means that Hi-Fi Rush is very distinct from most other games that use a cell shaded style as almost every other prominent title using the technique drops it for environments and background detail. Games like Breath of the Wild and Persona 5 hew to regular texturing conventions just in a somewhat lower detail style than usual. Even Jet Set Radio had more raw texture detail than what we're seeing here. The game's environments showcase some of the more inspired artistic choices on display. Real-time lighting details are masked into half-tone comic book style patterns, which is prominently visible in Bloom and in the game's screen space reflections. Ambient occlusion is rendered as these sort of cross-hatched lines, a stylized take on the typical AO map. Real-time shadows have a gloopy rounded look and feature animated transitions between different shadow cascade levels. The outline shader is active across environmental geometry as well, producing beautiful thick black silhouettes. Backgrounds are often represented with bold 2D art instead of geometry, and there's so much ambient animation thrumming through areas at any given time, again all in sync with the musical beat. Hi-Fi Rush has fairly simple model detail and complexity within those environments to keep them consistent and easily navigable but it fits well within the game style. My only quibble here is that most of the levels have a sort of industrial character to them and do blend together a little bit. This is especially true for roughly the middle half of the game, though there are more distinct evocative levels that bookend the experience. If any of Hi-Fi Rush's visual elements didn't work, the whole aesthetic of the game would be fundamentally compromised. This isn't like a typical 3D game where you can lean on complex lighting and a detail-packed world to overcome artistic inconsistencies. Tango Gameworks made a lot of bold choices in the basic construction of this title, and their bravery has been rewarded with an absolutely stunning game. All the careful visual design in the world wouldn't give the game a proper 2D look if Hi-Fi Rush looked like a jagged mess, and here the game impresses as well. Image quality is very strong on Series X, with a super sharp, super clean presentation throughout. It tends to look very 4K-like and I struggle to see any visual artifacts whatsoever while playing. Series S looks a bit softer but typically has good image quality too. There's a little bit more breakup on edge detail if you do look closely, but it's otherwise very solid. Pixel counts reveal that Series S is operating at 1440p with no signs of dynamic resolution. It's a straight 2560 by 1440 in every shot. Series X clocks in at a full 4K, again with no signs of dynamic res. That's pretty much a best case scenario for a current generation console title, and it's reflected in stronger than usual image quality on both consoles, even during complex motion. Outside of image quality, I was able to spot a couple of settings differences between Series S and X in matching shots. Shadow quality at range takes a bit of a hit on the weaker machines, with simplified shadows at a distance and absent shadow coverage on smaller geometric elements. Foliage density also suffers slightly with thinner grass on the S. General visual settings do seem otherwise closely matched, however. Both consoles target 60 FPS and both deliver a very consistent experience. I played through the entire game on Series X and didn't notice any framerate dips at all, outside of a few moments later in the game where I think that the animation deliberately slowed. That means a locked 60 FPS even in taxing moments. Combined with the game's subtle but high quality motion blur, it feels very smooth and responsive. Series S is essentially a lock 60 as well, though the console does have a tendency to drop a single 16.7 millisecond frame on occasion. This can occur during combat or traversal, though it is uncommon and I suspect most players won't notice. So the consoles are on very solid footing, but what about the PC? Now this may not seem like a game that would particularly tax good PC hardware, given its strong resolution and performance numbers on console, but there is a catch here. Hi-Fi Rush was built using Unreal Engine 4 and runs under DirectX 12, which usually means an uneven experience on computers that is characterized by shader compilation stutter. Thankfully, Hi-Fi Rush is one of a small handful of UE4 titles to buck that trend. There's a small pre-compilation step on boot, but there's very little in the way of compilation stutter during the game itself. Alex was kind enough to supply footage of the first half hour of the game running on his 12900K plus RTX 4090 system, and it comes very close to a locked frame rate. 
He did record one brief 50 millisecond pause during his capture which does appear to be related to compilation, but everything else was perfectly smooth. PC also has a considerable image quality edge over consoles for users with capable hardware. The game supports Unreal's temporal super resolution, as well as XESS, DLSS, and FSR1. All of the temporal upsampling options are capable of constructing more image detail than the default TAA at native res. Just look at the main character's face in this shot. XCSS and DLSS also exhibit less issues with disocclusion than the TAA, showing less obtrusive artifacts on character movement. Other PC staples like ultra-wide support and running at unlocked frame rates are supported. The only real caveat here, as far as I can tell, is that the game's timing system probably means that running at a stable frame rate is important for consistent gameplay. Luckily, hitting a stable 60 FPS or 120 FPS shouldn't be an issue for most users, especially given the various upsampling techniques that are available for use. And unfortunately, there's no FOV adjustment available at the moment, though hopefully this can be added in at some point. I could spend all day talking about Hi-Fi Rush. It's just that good. The game oozes style and has clearly been created with impeccable craft and attention to detail. The general production values also impress. While Hi-Fi Rush is a moderate length adventure, clocking in at about 11 hours for me, the game is interspersed with a lot of high quality cutscenes and bespoke gameplay segments. Transitions between levels are handled with beautiful comic book sequences, and there are actual proper 2D animated cutscenes as well. Conventionally animated narrative episodes that pay homage to Hi-Fi Rush's inspirations. Other titles have embraced similar constraints in pursuit of this sort of look. Jet Set Radio and Beautiful Joe feel like the most natural points of comparison, but outside of perhaps the last two Guilty Gear games, I can't think of any other recent titles that nail a 2D animation look so thoroughly. It impresses in particular because this is a fully 3D title in both gameplay and graphics, so it can't rely on a fixed perspective camera setup to hide its 3D elements. Everything else that I don't have time to go into detail on today, the writing, character designs, particle effects, music and user interface is all top-notch stuff. A polished new game with novel gameplay concepts and interesting art that nails basically everything out of the gate. You really couldn't ask for more. Hi-Fi Rush almost feels like a missing member of the Capcom 5, an experimental stylish game that breaks conventions to achieve something special. It definitely does have a certain 6th gen console sensibility, reminiscent of an age when unusual concepts were more often greenlit, particularly from Japanese studios. To drop the game out of the blue on Xbox and PC was definitely a risky decision, but if anything it just adds to those aforementioned qualities and there aren't any significant bugs or performance woes that I noticed across any platforms, which is its own accomplishment. Most players will probably tackle this one on Game Pass, but I do think it deserves a full disc release at some point, especially given the licensed music it uses, which could limit its digital shelf life. As far as I'm concerned, this is an early contender for Game of the Year, and undoubtedly one of the most attractive games we'll see in 2023. Hi-Fi Rush is an absolute blast, and everyone should give it a shot. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfounder.net for exclusive and early access content, and to get in touch, just use Twitter. Thanks for watching.